wheel chair. You're going to look for operation, make sure it, it goes out, it's dirty, safe. Um, legs are loose on this one. Legs broke. Yeah, that one the weld. Yeah, broke. right here the weld's broke. You guys see that? Well, not yet. <laughs> not yet. So we know this is scrap. We, we know the, the, the chair itself is no good. All right, so there's parts on this chair that may be usable. Um, I personally, every pair of these foot rests that you get, put them in your holding stocking area. Um, because you're going to find that most of your chairs that come in do not have legs on them. Um, all manufacturers don't use the same legs, but uh, most individual manufacturers, the legs will fit uh, around different of their styles of chairs. So if you've got a drive, those legs are going to fit most drive manufactured chairs. Um, we're going to assume this has passed the broken test. Okay, So everything's good on the chair. Now we're going to check the wheels. We're going to check the bearings. First thing to do. Spin the wheel. Look down the center line of the wheel. This one's wobbling a little bit. This one over here. This one's wobbling a little bit. Okay, so possibly your bearings are bad. Um, easy way to check your bearings, just grab your wheel, move it side to side, up and down, see if there's any play in it. Neither of these wheels have any play. So you, I would say, okay, th this these, these wheels are in good shape. If you want to look a little farther, you can look on the back of the, the wheel, there's a bearing plate. The, the shiny silver thing here on, on the back, that's your bearing. Look in your bearing, make sure there's not debris hanging out of it. Hair, Hair dirt. You can pop the center cap off. If there is debris, pop the center cap off. There's a bolt, take it off. You can take the wheel off physically clean it out. Um, you can replace the bearings if necessary. Most um, wheelchairs now have quick release wheels on them where that right there would just be a button you push, pull the wheel off. It's a lot easier, a lot faster. Same thing on your front wheels. Go ahead. The quick release is this button? If it does have, I don't think this one does. Uh, but it would be? Yep, yeah, you just push that in and it just releases it. And you, it's like, kind of like a uh, mountain bike quick release. Pull that right off, and you have the whole thing. You can see through the bearing if it needs any grease. The spindle that spins on, you can see if that needs any grease. That may actually need cleaned off. That may have hair, or gum, stuff like that. And then you just put the wheel back on it, and you'll hear it snap, and it's ready to go. Aren't you using like WD-40? Mm -hmm. You okay. do that. We have uh, TV Blaster. Yeah, TV what? Blaster. TV Blaster. Same. Same stuff. Okay. So TV you Blaster. Like Liquid Yeah. Flat grab, crap, or flathead screwdriver knife, uh, and then it's got a, a, just a deep little pocket and you can take it off. Um, same thing on the little wheels, spin them. Just look and make sure they're rolling pretty straight. Um, this one is. Check it side to side, back to forward. It's good. Any moving parts, check them. When you're spinning it, just feel of it. If it feels like it's smooth, um, not hanging, uh, or grinding, chances are the bearings are good. You can take it apart. Um, obviously anything that moves can come apart. But if it feels solid, it feels smooth, I wouldn't suggest going that far into it. Um, if there is movement, uh, or if there is grinding, or uh, if it's hanging, go ahead and pull it apart. Do like Wes said, spray it with some WD-40, put some grease on it, put it back together, see if that works. Um, this chair, obviously, frames broke. I would suggest taking the legs off, take the wheels off, put them in your reuse pile, <coughs> throw the rest of it away. Um, you mean the big wheels or the middle wheels? I would, I would take them both. Oh. It, it, and I, I'm not saying do that with every chair, um, but obviously these wheels are in really good shape, so I would keep them. I mean, if you had a chair that's 20 years old and the, the, the wheels wore out, just throw that away. You, I mean, use your judgment. Okay, next, if we're looking at this, my opinion, okay, we're missing a seat, 
we've got a key switch that does not function at all. We can't get power. The horn doesn't work. It's physically broken. We've got a lot of issues here. Headlights missing out of the front of it. Parts are missing off the front. Probably a basket. This is a candidate for the trash. Um, I don't see anything other than maybe, maybe the wheels that you could take off and reuse. Old batteries you can recycle them. They'll take money for those for them. Yeah, them. what three dollars or something like that for the battery. So anything that's battery operated, go ahead and pull the battery. Get the lead cover. The whole cover comes off there. I don't know what this is. She put that out here. What we got here? What's this? A broken gate. All right. I, I would keep the bottom part of it. Um, it, it it's obviously a quad chain. Quad chains come and go, but not a lot. Um, it comes apart. Just keep this part. Um, this is trash. It, if, if you want to keep the handle, you know, it'll, it'll twist off with a little bit of effort and some hot water. And <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, but if you get something like this, something that's obviously broken, don't worry about trying to keep it. Um, it's not going to be worth your while. Somebody will end up thinking there's not nothing wrong with it, and they'll grab it and so collapse it and get hurt. But that uh, little key. Yeah, you could keep it. You could keep that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, look look at what's on it. Um, you'll see what you get a, a, a need for. Um, if it comes off, you get it. All right, what's that? Slide under your mattress, they help you get up there. I had to go look it up. Yeah. That was Princeton. Jimmy looked it up on, uh, Jimmy looked it up on, uh, Princeton. Her mom had ALS and they just wanted to that. Yep. So, when you get odd stuff in like this, don't let it go. Oh, well, we um, it will stay here for three years and you'll want to get rid of it. You get rid of it, and then somebody will pick it up. Even, even if there's yeah, something yeah. broke on something like that, I, need to get um, the back and I would suggest looking for parts if, if you need. All right, that was the quick and easy. Any questions? here has the control unit for the chemicals. These are all color coded. For example, you got a red cap and that is for disinfectant, which it says it right on there. Okay, which page um, are you looking at again? This is page 10. Page 10. This in here. Um, you can do them in order however you want to. They've got them lined up in a certain order. It really doesn't matter. Um, just for example, like this one here, the drying aid. It actually has 
the different what it is. This is it could either be the clean, sanitized, uh, sudden removal, or drying aid, which is some drying aid. So drying aid has a blue cap on it, which colored that right there. And the only difference, you have two gallons of cleaner. The green cap feeds it into the entire spray arms for the automatic wash. The yellow cap is for the hose to do something individually really quick if you wanted to. Um, it's got these little couplings that fit on there whenever it's time to, if that gets low, which if it gets, if someone here gets low, there's another page I'll show you later. It'll tell you what the flashing lights are. And you just pop that out. It's got like a straw. You'll pull it out, take the empty jug out, put the new one in. So that cap never changes. Nope. The cap is always attached to the tube that goes yep. into the hub scrub. And all we do is change the bottle of That's the it. solution. And the extra ones are over here on the, yep. over the mirror. The only there. thing okay. it's, the reason it's important to keep the colors right is because when it gets to the red cycle, it needs to be doing disinfectant instead of drying aid, because then you won't be getting disinfectant on it. And like I said, they're all color coded right there. Okay. So it's really hard. Um, I would just take this, you could probably just top that out, blow it up and paste the it right there. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll clean it like that actually. Okay, perfect. And we'll do that color coded to make it like this. Okay. That's on page 10. Okay. Um, And you said there would be uh, some type of alert if one of the chemicals is running low and needs to be changed. That's what you're looking for? Oh, uh, okay. I remember you saying two of these are the same solution, but they still have different colored caps. Mm -hmm. Is it the, this color? The um, green and yellow. Okay. The green feeds into the sprayer arms to do it automatically. The yellow is for the hose on there. Okay. There we go. On page 23, anytime those lights blink, it will tell you what each one of them means right there. Okay. Um, and the lights are on the front of the machine. Yeah. Okay. Low chemical will be red and green lights blinking okay. together. So if they start okay. if they start blinking together, you'll just um, okay. they start blinking together, you just pull this little thing here. Mm -hmm. Demo? No, hang on. You already broke it? No. <laughs> Take me out of the way if I'm in the way. You're I just right. want to make sure <laughs> I can get everything on the video. Right, right. So I'm ready. I'm just glad you're doing something finally. 
Uh, this hose actually right here does both soap and water. When the dial is this way, you can, it just comes out like a jet and it'll, get, it'll heat up eventually. Um, this little piece right here is where the soap comes through, so if you twist it back around the other way, you can actually see the soap come up right through there. So then you just pull it back the other way and it shuts that off and then it's water only. So something like that actually doesn't look very, very dirty. You could just put this on there, spray it down, turn it off, and it's just like a car wash once you set it back to rinse then spray the, the soap back off of it so it's not that bad. Uh, it's just kind of something quick you can do with it if you need to. And one thing Darren's not aware of is we have the greatest tool to work on ours and his name is Jason. He was the one that done the plumbing. As far as cleaning filters, I really, I've never done it before because I just call Jason and Jason does it. He works for us. So um, the filter itself is down inside of here and I don't know what this You can see the drain is right there. So it should just pull all that water right out of there. It'll do it automatically on its own too. How did you do that? Uh, you just what hit on. It just goes right on empty, and once it says status and it turns up green. You're good to go. Now, once you want to put something in there to wash it, just remember to turn that back off. Okay, so where's the filter? The filter is in that little uh, drain right there, kind of like a sink drain. Oh, so you would get down there and just pull it yeah, out? Yeah, you can pull that, that out. Um, we've had them stop up one time because, like you said, we was putting extremely dirty, like cobwebs, dust, grime, everything, and it ended up clogging the hole. So is it a metal filter? Yeah. Okay, so it's not a replaceable. No, I don't, I, I've never known them to replace them, but we haven't, you know, we've had ours for about a year and I've never had to. Um, he actually had to disconnect the hose in the back that does the drain, and he snaked a shop back up in there and pulled out all the gunk and everything, all the hair, everything, and just vacuumed it all out with the shop back, and it was perfectly fine. Um, one thing I noticed is ours has a little computer screen that sits right here. So yours is just kind of system check, which means something's wrong, green light's good. Ours up here will actually tell us what's going on. If it says something's wrong with it, a little code comes up and we got an instruction manual, I can look at the code and it says drain malfunction, anything like that, um, which is what I call Jason, he comes and fixes for me. So did this, is there an instruction manual with this one? I have no idea. It, it, it probably doesn't because ours doesn't have this on it. So I'm assuming if it did, it would sit right here and that actually wouldn't be there. Um, but right. like I said, it's all going to work the same really. So it's no, not. I just wonder if there was an instruction manual. Uh, it's actually all in here okay. and I laid it back there too when we talk about putting the chemicals and everything in it. Um, is this what we're going to put in here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, when you put something in there, just make sure this sprayer arm and that sprayer arm and that one's going to rotate back and forth. Make sure neither one of those are blocked. And just and always. Put the brake on. Yep. I always lock the brake on it. Can you uh, take that plastic off of the wheel? Yeah, we'll take it off. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to go down in your drain now, and it's on the front wheels too. Oh, okay. Let's take. It comes on the wheels. Just have to turn it off. Break on. 
Usually, I try, also have the sprayer that comes, you can see it right there, uh -huh. it'll go straight up, so I kind of put it in the middle of that, it like so. So I can, anybody bringing their laundry to wash. Yeah. <laughs> Those are looking like that. And it'll tell you everything when it's ready to do it, so you just click that on. So it's status ready. All the chemicals, I just put them in there. Um, you can do whether you want to go quick, normal, long, it doesn't matter. It's all going to do the same thing, just how fast you want to get it out. We usually leave our set on quick, and then you do disinfection, under spray, and those two are lit up. And curious about this one because it tells us what it's doing up here as it's doing it. Yeah. Um, once it goes to the disinfection part, it'll spray it on there. It's real light mist and then it'll actually leave it on there for 500 seconds. And it'll count down to 500. that you want to you can stop it and check it change it however you feel you know anytime you hit stop it'll just reset the whole thing
check sits on the back one. Yeah, they're okay. co they're color coded, so okay. you just put you put it in here. And if you give one, you can probably take this part right here, color coded chemical coupling, type it up, print it up, and put it on the back here. Okay. So that way you'll remember, and it tells you like the blue one is for the drying aid. So there's the drying aid. It says right there. Right. The blue cap on it. Okay. Yeah. So you just fill it up with color. Why is I don't get me back here, so you guys go on. So you can look at what's going on. How that is sitting right there and stay on there. So what's left in the blue one says for drying, and it says, yep, you can see. It comes out like it's like putting a straw in there and then just screw it. They actually last a very long time too. But how many, how many times do you get all that request? Um, we've been running ours for a year. We were just talking about uh, different. One like this, just take the pad off before you put it in the hub scrub so that way this won't get soaked and saturated. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is actually just held on by two bolts in the bottom. You can take it off, and it's also Velcroed in there. That way you're not soaking the pad because it takes forever to dry. Uh, the one like this, I don't know if I would even put it in there. Because that's a, that'll get real soaked. That's got foam under it, and it may not dry at all. I mean, it probably will eventually, but I just, that was one we cleaned by hand. Okay. Lysol, Lysol on the pad should be fine, wouldn't hurt it. Okay. Uh, this part right here is the bearing. You, catch catch you can look at this if the wheel doesn't spin freely like that. Uh -huh. Right here you can look, usually there's hair or some kind of anything that gets wound up in there. Uh -huh. If you need to, you can just take a little screwdriver or something and pop that cap Would off. That one work? And is that too big or do you want a little one? Let's try that little one there. There you go. See that? Okay. And then just the socket goes over that. Remember to hold this side. You just turn that and the whole wheel will just slide off. And you can look inside the bearing, see if there's anything wrong with it. May just need some grease on it and put that back on there. If you lose those things, because we lose them all the time, it's no big deal. Don't hurt anything. Most of them now come with a quick release where you'll just push that and pull it right off. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, that's what all because that one was alternating back and forth, it was something, yeah, it was something real simple. Um, spray arm took longer than three minutes to go from up to down. Um, it could have been actually something inside of here that kind of went wrong, but in any event, you can always stop it and then restart it again and see if it does it a second time. Um, we have to switch on ours that we can control the arm speed and for some reason it says the uh, system malfunction anytime we try to do a uh, slow cycle. We have to put it on fast or it won't work. I don't know why. We've just never questioned it. But this one is doing something I don't understand. Stick. So it's 
so that's not what so what is it doing to what is it doing? Uh, this one ours has actually a dial on it that we can set our spray arm speed. We can go from uh, you can stop it or it can go slower, it can go fast. But what I'm saying is so what is this one doing? Um, it doesn't have anything to turn. I'm assuming it's gonna go just one I was wondering how I was getting soap in the bottom without getting all over everywhere else. Maybe just roll it in the rain down there. Uh, probably got the smell better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I was working 165 degree water down there. So. so if it's interrupted like that, will the cycle start over from the beginning or it'll yeah. kind of pick up? So we're at if the it, like it did like there, the things were flashing on and off. One of the things, I didn't even think to check it, I was crazy. Uh, it says right on there, the spray orange took longer than three minutes to go from upward position to the downward or vice versa. Those things was blocking it from going up. So.
that, just see how the mist is flying over it, that's the disinfectant right there. That's what it's going to look like. So what's that first part? Of the that's it washes it and then does the disinfectant. Um, I'm just going to assume it'll do the same. You can kind of see it. Yeah. Um, ours does the, the wash, then it does the disinfectant, and then the disinfectant actually sits on there. Like I said, we got a little timer and it'll count down from 500 seconds. Once it hits zero, it'll spray it off again for another two or three minutes, and then it's just finished. And ideally, we're supposed to sanitize it before it even goes in here. Not that really. So we don't really sanitize it like that one that come in. I would just look for if it's got a thick pile of dust, like the, the dust bunnies all over it. Um, any hair that's all over the wheels that's going to come off and get clogged up in the drain. There's like visible dirt. Yeah, visible. that's what we're, and usually with that, uh, because the 409 that we use to clean them also has a disinfectant. It's not strong, but it's disinfectant. Um, we spray it on a rag, just kind of wipe it down, and then put it in there. Sometimes, like that one looked pretty clean already, so what I would do is just put it in there and do disinfect only, just to okay. make sure it was done, you know, done correctly. What I was saying earlier about dis or disinfecting it before you put it in there, if, if you're gonna be working with it and you're gonna be hands on, go ahead and disinfect it and then put it in there. I see, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be, be handling it before. Yeah. Like, but if, you know, if you're just gonna wheel it from the truck to the hub truck, then the hub strap can do the disinfection for you. Gotcha, okay. Burn a lot. Um, I'm gonna assume this one's doing like ours. The disinfectant's been sprayed on there and it's just letting it set for X number of minutes. Um, like ours is, like I said, it does 500 seconds. Sometimes I'll just tell the students, wait till it gets to 250. And then when it is, hit stop button. Once you do that, it'll all just, restart over, you can turn those off and it's ready to go. And I always empty it most of the time after I'm done with it, just to make sure. So do you not have to wait until it goes through the 500 second cycle or? I mean, usually once it's already sprayed it off and disinfectant, while it's doing all this sitting in there, the disinfectant's sitting on it and just kind of waiting it out. I've got a student that's real, 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 real hyperactive. I'll tell him, I'm like, watch that. I'm going to sit there and stare at him and wait and let me know when it's done. So the quick cycle is 15 minutes? I think it's about 10 to 15 minutes is what it runs. So now that one's ready. Yeah, that's hot now. And how did you know that was ready? Because did something right there, it just that's... Came yep. on. Gotcha. Okay. Um, now, if you put the disinfectant on there, like it's still sitting on there right now, you can wait a little bit and then get hold of the hose there. And kind of give a spray off. Uh, sometimes it gets the arms don't get right behind there. Oh, sorry. You can kind of spray those a little bit. Watch this right here because it's going to be really, really hot. Uh, the, brass pieces on there. Okay, so this thing does not rinse off the disinfectant? Yeah, it will. It'll run through the whole disinfectant. Oh, you just then, cut it off? Yeah, I just cut it short. Easy. So okay. uh, you could put something in there and hit disinfect on it. That's when we ought to clean, clean this chair and make sure it's oral. Uh, you can put something disinfectant only, make sure that whatever you want it to do, if you have empty on there, it'll do that first. But just turn that off, disinfect only. And, um, it always pulls out the water from the drain and then gets ready to feed it in. See, the stuff that we have that cleans it is actually foam. So that right there fills up with a white foam and then it blasts it out everywhere. <laughs> but maybe with this you can kind of see the orange raising up and down. I don't know if you can see it really well or not. Whenever it gets ready to get started, it'll
sorry if I missed this, is the door hot when you open it? Like when you release the locks, if you, when oh, it, yeah, when you first it's going to be hot in there the, to touch, right? Yeah, all like, the steam is going to Even outside, it's like everything. Okay, so people should be careful about that. That's what, usually sorry, whenever we use ours, hours, I leave the door open when I leave for work just to let everything dry. Okay. And after like a month of using it, um, we just spray 409 in our line at all and spray it out. Or you could actually use the soap from the hose itself, flip the soap on, spray it down, and then flip it back off. And then to clean the inside. Yeah, just clean it out. Yeah. So if this thing keeps blinking, then it's just letting the disinfectant set on there. Because it's obviously done doing... So it's probably just going to let it sit on there and soak, and that'll blink until it's ready to kick back on and rinse it off. So you have the option actually, you can go ahead and turn it off if you want to. Um, touch it off on it. And then when you pop that open, it'll be... Steam. Oh, that's real hot in there. Um, sometimes, like I said, if it's the end of the day, we just open that up, shut that off, and leave it. Or actually, if it's a bigger wheelchair with all the tubes and everything, tilt it back so everything will drain out of the seat and everything, because that's gonna... This right here will be soaking wet. It's all real hot, but. Is the orange rod as hot as this one? Yeah. So they made it an exhaust fan here. Huh? They made it an exhaust fan. So this one's a whole lot smaller than orange. Yeah. Yeah, this one here, it's hot too. I mean, you can feel the side of how hot it is. But that one is pretty well. Set it like that and just leave it. Just let it sit like that overnight. That pad and everything should dry. The drying agent doesn't work as well as it claims to, so we just always have towels and dry everything by hand. I know you mentioned not to put multiple folded chairs in mm -hmm. here. I'm sorry, is that true of walkers also? We actually could put several walkers in there. But do they, um, they have to be open? As long as it's not the room lighter. And, oh, okay. You know, if, if you've got just the standard aluminum lockers, you can fold them up. We fold them. Just make sure the um, that little spray nozzle right there laying by that belt, make sure nothing's blocking it. Okay. So, like, I wouldn't lay nothing like that over it, but mm -hmm. say like that wouldn't hurt it. That's just me personally. Okay. So I can, like he said, lay three or four walkers flat down and just make sure that has room to spray out. Can you show me what was blocked before? Sorry, when it falls. Oh yeah, it's the um, the foam was actually right here on these. Cause see how these are real. And they, they're supposed to raise up. Yeah, and it was okay. basically just the where's foam. The belt? They were in there to stabilize them. Wes, where's the belt? Belt for. No, you just said the spray on was. Oh, the oh, that safety belt out. right there, yeah. Okay, I the see it now. I see safety it. belt's right over that little spray nozzle, which okay. if that's there, that's not going to matter. It's just okay, I see it now. Belt so does the there. roll later have a cushion seat? Some of them do. And that's why you wouldn't want to fold it up and right. put it, okay. Right. okay. Any questions on it? That's pretty much, like I said, you just, like Darren said, you flip it on. It'll tell you uh, ready. And we used to always do under spray, disinfect, and it will go right now with the door open, just so it's water. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it will. It will. Yeah, okay. I can turn it on right now and it just... Watch this on. Yeah. <laughs> this. Disinfect this on. Basket. Uh, parts basket. 
So whenever you do it, you can be able to get this, this, and this. Um, and you can put small parts in this basket. Um, she was asking the other day about um, little plastic uh, balls like they have in the jump houses. Um, you'll be able to use those in here, I think. Yeah. Maybe try one in here before you put a bunch in here to make sure it doesn't melt. Um, she had laundry bags. I think it'd be perfectly fine to put those in a laundry bag, set them in here, and, and go with it. I don't think it would hurt anything. Um, before I went that route, though, like I said, I, I would try one. Um, they were a pretty soft plastic. They, they may melt. I mean, they'd be my only concern with that. And if it don't, then I, I think you can clean your, your kids' stuff with that, too. Can I do a quick look at the look at stuff? And then yeah.